Hello you multi, multi-maturation mess makers. I'm Ralphie, in the Bothy, with an extras for you. Extras number 991. And that malt mention, which I started with, has been provided by Attention Pictures, also known as Tillman Pradmacher. And there you have it. So thank you, Tillman. And my subject for this extras is learning to read labels on whiskey. It's something when we start out with, it doesn't seem particularly important, so long as it states the brand, and so long as it appeals to us, we'll tend to go ahead and buy it if the price is accessible to our budget. And we may read in some detail, all, all of what's in the label, rather than just, you know, the name of the whiskey and the age statement if it's got one, and, and then we pour a glass and we don't think any more about it. But when we start out, you see, the whole idea of chill filtration, car caramel colour being added to the whiskey, the whiskey being bottled at 40%, well, frankly, it isn't that important. All we're really concerned about is the fact that we are drinking a single malt. It's therefore something special. Therefore, that single malt must be good. And therefore, we have completed our mission as a consumer to buy the product or, or receive it as a pre birthday present or a gift and, and consume it and enjoy it. And initially, we may just not quite enjoy the first taste as our senses get shocked by the complexity of the flavour interaction and the sensation range within the whisky. But we get used to it and of course after you've had a few drinks and you're no longer sober, you really start to enjoy it because alcohol numbs our senses and we start to read more positively into what we're consuming. So that's the way we start, and there's nothing wrong with that because you've got to start at the beginning. It's only when we get more experience that we start to pay closer attention to the details on the label. Now I want to tell you something. I was looking through my whiskey stash recently, and I came across a bottle of 25-year-old Kalula. I bought it, it must have been about eight years ago and I thought oh my goodness sir 25 year old Kalila and then I looked again this is an official bottling 43% so it's bottled at 43% it's an official bottling therefore it's bottled by Diageo who own Kalila and therefore it's going to be chill filtered and I thought to myself do I really want to disappoint and let myself down by tasting an aged Kalila which has been heavily compromised, particularly at that age, by chill filtration and probably a drop of caramel is added to just for luck. So I decided I'm not going to open it and I've put it into auction and I'm going to sell it and I'll use the money to buy younger whiskies which are naturally presented with integrity at 46% unchill filtered and natural colour. I'm at the stage now, I'm not wasting my time placing too much faith in the producers when I can read the label and I can deduce from that label the real value of the whiskey to me. And this is a challenge for us all. And I've just reviewed this whiskey, Isle of Arden, and I, I'm coming back to this subject, you know, th this, you know, spotting integrity whiskies, spotting good labels that give you valuable information. And this is a classic example of that. Even though it doesn't carry an age statement, it replaces that with some valuable, tangible information that give me a point of reference as to the real value of what I'm paying to get. And in this case, it says quarter cask. So for any experienced whiskey fan, you know that a quarter cask is a smaller cask. 
it works faster. Therefore, even at a young age, you're getting more speed of maturation. So how about the quality of the cask? Because you get lousy quarter casks and good quarter casks. And a few in between. But this is a brand that's got a solid reputation, a consistency in what it bottles. Having said that, I'm not buying any 25, 26 or even 30 year old arms when they come out. I think it's too expensive and I think this style of whiskey suits its younger years, particularly as an 18 to 21 year old. But that's my personal opinion. So I wouldn't be buying the really old versions. But the younger versions, particularly the 10 year old, it's an absolute banger of a malt, highly recommended. But importantly, with all the Arons, they give disclosure. And you're looking for integrity of disclosure. Let me tell you about the brands that give disclosure without integrity. These are the brands that boast routinely, particularly when, they visit, when you visit the distillery, about when they were founded and how old they are. You know, the fact is, it doesn't matter when a distillery was founded and how, how old it is, because it's what it's doing now. It's who owns it now. It's how good the whiskey is now, not then. The whole idea with a, you know, established in 18 whatever, is that they're suggesting that the antiquity of the business reflects the antiquity and the quality of what they're bottling. And this can be absolute disingenuous flannel when you've got big, bold year of founding statements followed by heavily chill filtered caramel coloured whisky, which fine when you're a beginner and you don't know any better. But I tell you, as time goes on, and I know many of you watching my videos, you are experienced single malt drinkers. So you're looking for the clues because you can only buy so many bottles. We can only buy so many bottles. We're all in a budget and that budget's getting tighter. We need to narrow down the best from the rest within the range of our budget. And we get that information a lot of that information from labels as well as our online research. So I'm going to tell you a bit more about the disingenuous labels. Here's the sort of script and the narrative that they employ. We have selected only the very finest of hand-picked boutique casks, which we have filled with our finest of new make spirit. And now it rests slumbering for X, fill in the number, um, long, long years in our warehouse undisturbed. And what you're getting there is frankly fictional theater. What is a hand selected cask? Well, it's the one that happened to get rolled in, in, in out the, the warehouse or taken on and off a forklift truck. What is long years? You know, long years are exactly the same as short years. The 365 days, it's bullshit. Undisturbed? Really? How, what, what, what does undisturbed mean? They've never been checked, never been touched in however many years. Or perhaps they had a reorganisation in the warehouse and they cracked and banged and walloped the cask around a few times as they, they moved it in and out from one rack to another. There's absolutely no need for disclosure. So we've got to be aware of this relatively innocuous and seemingly passive flannel. Treat it with suspicion. You really, really should. When they talk about you know, the finest and of hand selected and the, you know, the very best of oak. What does that mean? Well, actually, it means nothing. It means absolutely nothing. But what they're doing is employing psychology. They want you to fill in the gaps for yourself. They want you to auto suggest that because it's been slumbering in their warehouse, whoever where that house that is, could be a big industrial unit inside, in, inside a city limit. It could be a small authentic 
uh, earthen warehouse out in a remote area where there's very little traffic and not much in the way of diesel fumes. You, you, you really don't know. You've got, you've got to do, we all have to do our own forensics to get beyond the flannel to, to say, right, I'm going to grade distilleries. I'm going to grade distilleries as to their competency for the discerning whiskey connoisseur. Therefore, what percentage of their bottlings are 46% unchill filtered and natural colour? Now, distilleries may not do their entire range unchill filtered because they have to sell their whiskey. And if they happen to chill filter their entry level bottle, because that's the one that's selling to the tourists who visit the distillery or are passing through travel retail, well, who are we to judge them for it? They're a business, they're running a business and they're going to make money as best they can. And my goodness, it's getting harder and harder and harder these days with the way British Britain's economy is being, is being raided for taxes. It's, you know, it's self-evident. Uh, you know, I take, take value added tax. I remember when it was 12.5% and then it went to 15, then it went to 17.5% and now it's 20%. That is a fifth of all sales. One fifth goes in one single tax. It's one reason why Britain's in serious trouble now, but I'm not going to dwell on that. We, it's good to see things as they really are. And knowing that distilleries really have to work hard and, and knowing as I do that many, particularly the smaller distilleries that actually notice me um, are saying, right, we need to get our integrity whiskey out there at an accessible price. Then, then they're going to get, they're going to get traffic. They're going to get mentioned, particularly online commentary. And it's not one single commenter. It's all the commentators. And all the commentators are getting more and more experienced. And in that experience is sifting out the flannel and the old school marketing, you know, the purest and freshest of water cascading down the hillside. That doesn't cut it these days. You want to be disclosing your mineral content. You want to be disclose, disclosing whether you actually filter the water and if you're using the water at the distillery for your bottling or if you're bottling elsewhere, what water are you using? It doesn't sound quite so glamorous when you say you're using the domestic, uh, the, the commercial domestic water supply of a medium town somewhere in Scotland. But the fact is you're still probably using soft water because there's very little limestone in Scotland. And soft water is very good once you get the chlorine out of it. And it's interesting to see that the smaller independent bottlers who are light on their feet and who are tapping in to the zeitgeist of the moment, who are giving genuinely informative messaging. For example, Thompson Brothers, when they state that they reduce their whiskey gradually with water, not all at once. People who understand whiskey, Scotch whiskey, they'll get it. They'll really get it. They'll say, yeah, well, that's the way. I'd, I don't add all my water at once when I pour a glass of whiskey because it shocks the whiskey. I add it gradually and incrementally and at room temperature. It all, it all adds up. So here's a classic example, and it's well worth mentioning, of a modern contemporary whiskey label, which is telling us what an experienced whiskey drinker who knows what they're looking for is wanting to hear before they buy the product. Simple, unpretentious and no flannel in the label. Now, there's nothing wrong with pretty pictures. Nothing wrong at all. It's theatre. It's genuine. It's fine. But when you have something that's being a little bit disingenuous, flippant or humorous without being funny, that should get the alarm bells going. When you get fluorescent colours on the label 
and pictures which have absolutely no bearing whatsoever to the content of the bottle, again, alarm bells should go. Because what you have are some companies who are trying to market to you through the label in ways that's got nothing to do with what's in the bottle. What's in this bottle is cask strength 46.2%, quarter cask non-age statement whiskey, the quarter cask 125 litres, it's unchill filtered, it's natural colour, they've got braille to tell you that it's whiskey, therefore this is an inclusive labelling. This is a sympathetic labelling for those who are visually challenged. That is integrity. That gets no noticed. The casual drinker, they're not really going to spot it. But you'll spot it, and I certainly spot it. And that's what encourages to, to buy this. And I've been very happy to review it. It's a damn good whiskey, given enough time in the, in the glass just to open up and settle down. Uh, it gives you the location. It gives you the longitude and latitude. So you can go online. You can go to Google Maps and just see where it's made. You can see the provenance, the independent visual provenance of what you are tasting in the glass. It's understated and it's important, it's valuable. There's none of this rutting stags and purple heather, which if it's done right, it can work, particularly for a tourist bottling. If you happen to be in Edinburgh and you're looking for purple heather whiskey, or Rutting Stag's Whiskey, or, or Daft Wee Doggy's Whiskey. Brilliant. Hopefully you're not paying too much for it, so just watch your prices at some of these Edinburgh whiskey shops, um, particularly during um, the Edinburgh Festival, where they jack the prices up. Uh, I recommend Royal Mile Whiskies. It's a great little shop in Edinburgh, just opposite St Giles Cathedral. If you go in there, let them know that Ralphie sent you. They know their business. Small shop, big stock. I would conclude by saying, slow things down when you're buying whiskey or any spirit. When you get a notion, an impulse to buy something, rest on it. If it's suddenly going to sell out like a Kilkerran or a, a, a Springbank, you've probably missed it anyway. But there's many whiskies you can afford to think about it for a week before you go in and buy it. It's still there sitting in the shelves. Think about the distilleries. What's their way of working? Take Ochentoshin, for example. A corporate, multi -owned, corporate multinational owned distillery. It's a lovely lowland style of whiskey. But everything they do, is practically everything, is chill filtered, seriously chill filtered. They use loads of caramel colourant where they want to. And you're just getting a sanitised product. Now, if you're a passive consumer, fine. It's the whiskey for you. But as time goes on, our palates, as we develop are more inclined to get disappointed by bad experiences because we know what bad whiskey is. So we've got to be careful, slow things down, take more time in selecting the whiskey, and when we're exploring independent bottlings, do the research. Because some independent bottlings can be spectacularly good and others can be so-so. But by virtue of natural presentation, integrity presentation, not being chill filtered, not having caramel colouring added, they actually perform better because of that calibre of presentation. And you can find that it's slower to get to know these bottlings, but when we do really settle down with them, and perhaps every now and again, because we've got the experience, we tinker with them. We add a little bit of of other single malt to them, just to give them a, a lift. It's amazing how that can work. No whiskey should ever go down the sink. So be careful what you buy malt mates. Be aware of bottle bling, of disingenuous flannel, of the old fashioned superficial 
platitudes in the label that actually tell you nothing about what's in the bottle. When you see that, be suspicious. Be very suspicious and just move along the shelf a little bit and you will soon find another bottling which is 46% unchill filtered and delivering probably a better experience. Good luck to you. I'm Ralphie, sharing a malt moment here. And our mission is accomplished. All done now. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to subscribe and you haven't already subscribed, hey, now's the time. It's very quick and easy to do. And if you press the bell, you'll be notified, perhaps, of any future videos that I'm up uploading. Um, it's just the way it is. It's called the great mysterious algorithm of YouTube. Uh, but I'm very much familiar with it now. So thank you for watching and we'll see you soon, malt mates. And remember, as always, take it easy with the sauce, keep your sauce quality and take your time with it.